did us a, a great favor by coming in here because from our practice tapes each day, we realized where our weaknesses lied. One was the turnover area, and we were much better tonight. The second weakness has been our rebounding, and Barry did us a great favor. Because when you give up 29 second shots, two things happen. You're playing good defense, they're shooting a low percentage, and when you give up a second shot, you're taking away every fast break opportunity. So even though it was a high tempo game, we only had five fast breaks in the first half. So that's what exhibition basketball is all about. You see what you're doing well, and you see what your weak, where your weaknesses lie. And it's really technique is the reason we've been rebounding poorly. What we're doing, basically, without getting overly technical, is the shot goes, we're in good defensive position. The shot goes up, and we run to the rim. We run. So now it's a jump shot, and the ball comes off, obviously, more than five feet. We're running into the arc. So what we've been doing is showing them uh, Kenneth Reed tapes where he gets down, and instead of going toward the rim, he goes toward the perimeter while he watches the flight of the ball, and about 30% of his rebounds is chasing the ball down because he knows where it's going off. But he gets about 12 feet from the rim and watches the ball and chases it down where we're running to the rim. And the only thing you can do there is take the ball out of bounds when it goes in. So from a technical standpoint, this was very good for us because right now we saw our flaws and we could really work hard at that and it was great for the players. We kept our turnovers down and that's been a point of emphasis. I think our conditioning was very good except for one time when I had to call a timeout. But I wanted to play some of our guys' major minutes in a pressing all out. We didn't get in foul trouble um, by pressing. So I was, I was grateful for that. We didn't play any zone, we played all man. So I saw a lot of things I liked, but uh, the great thing about exhibition games is you know what to work on. And the obvious thing right now is we know how we, we can't give up, can't play great defense and give up 29 second shots. You said you asked to spend a lot with a lot of pressing and there weren't a lot of subs. Um, who are you happy with tonight uh, as far as? You know, I, I don't think necessarily I was happy with any individual. I thought Wayne was very aggressive, but he didn't go to the offensive glass. You know, and, and that's something he has to do. Um, I thought we, we, we did some good things passing the ball wise, uh, but I wasn't really happy with any specific player. Uh, I, was ha I really tried not to focus in on that as much as I do the ball movement, uh, the defensive help, and the rotations. And you know, we played, I, I think I can get to eight guys on our rotation. Was it surprising given the veterans that were in there having the, the lapse of time, the rebounds, and, you know, guys who have been through this. And yeah, and, and we they've been told that that's from practice, that's their weakness. But, you know, sometimes a dad can keep telling them, don't go in that neighborhood, don't go in that neighborhood, you're going to get in trouble, don't go in that neighborhood. And then finally you get in trouble and say, why don't I listen to my dad? Sometimes, coaching-wise, you tell them the weakness from every day watching film and practice, and then you, until the game starts, you, you don't realize it now. We've got their attention right now because that was one of the three areas of weakness on our basketball team. How is this team communicating defensively and things like that? They're doing a pretty pretty good job there. You know, it's it's you know sometimes, especially when you're physically weak, like Mango's a very good offensive rebounder. He's weak defensively because he gets his legs are so thin he gets pushed underneath. So the way to cure, cure your weak rebounding woes is you got a rebound on the weak side where 80% of the rebounds come off, two, two, and two versus one. The guard's got to leave them in and go to the back of the guy that's pushing Mango or pushing somebody underneath. And that's that's the other area we got to work on. Make sure that we rebound the weak side, two versus one. Coach, it's not in the ball movement was uh, very crisp. It seemed like the, the ball didn't stay in one guy's hand too long. Is that something that's an emphasis right now? Yeah, that's, that's if, you had, if I had to say a team-wise what's good. Now, obviously, we're not running a lot of our sets right now because we, um, we, our early opponents, we don't want to give them too much. Every game of ours is on some form of television, so we don't want to show as much as, as, as we would for a regular game. What about Nanu and his performance out there? Nanu's going to be a good basketball player. Um, he's very smart. He's physical. He's ready to play. Um, you know, he's going to be a good basketball player. How much does his passing add to what he 
high low stuff. He can yeah, do. and he, and he's he also he, he understands the game a little bit, like Montrez understands the game. He, he has a very good feel for the game of basketball, and uh, that's something very. But he has to play a lot this year. Obviously, when you go against the size of Minnesota or Ohio State, uh, and you play the teams we're playing, he's going to have to log a lot of minutes. And the good thing he's he's eighteen, so he's much more mature now. <laughs> This is one of the bigger teams you've had in recent memory. Was that because you were going to the ACC, or did it just kind of shake out that way in recruiting? No, I just it, it, it shook out that way. It's uh, I think that I know these big guys. When you look at them, I've been through it so much in my life. Uh, these bigs, they're just not ready to play. But God's are always ready to play early. Bigs are ready late, and these guys are going to be ready late. Like one guy doesn't have good skills right now, Mods. The other guy doesn't have good strength. They're both going to get strength, and he's going to get skills from all the individual instruction. Um, Nato gets by because he's, he's physically ready to play. Shaquan is not physically, you know, Shaquan is 175 pounds. So we play Montrez a little bit at small forward because of this type of schedule we're going to face. Was the turnover creation for you guys, was it what you wanted it to be? Or, or yeah, I, th I thought we did. We were a little late on, on rotations, but that's to be expected. When you play, you press the whole game, and you play good man, and you're always moving, it's a great conditioner as well. Uh, but the obvious thing is you can't get teams to take bad shots. And I would say about 30% of our rebounds tonight, we just didn't chase the ball down. You know, they were long, got them to take bad shots, we didn't chase it down, and you got to chase rebounds down. Have any thoughts, or did you take any notice of the 30-second shot clock experiment? I, I, we play with a 28-second shot clock in practice every day. Um, I don't think, you know, we're, we're slow to move in college basketball with a lot of things, um, but the women have been playing with her for a long time. Now they're quicker, smarter, better than us, but they've been playing with her for a long time. Coach, Chris had some early foul trouble. He seemed a little bit out of sync after coming back after the fouls. Do you think that may have uh, kept him from getting into a good flow today? You know, he played, I let him play with his two fouls for some time. Um, I was happy that Wayne didn't get in. Chris, Chris usually can stay out of foul trouble. Uh, how many fouls did Wayne have on my glasses on me? Three total. Yeah, that's, that's a minor miracle. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good exhibition game for us, it really was, because they were a well-coached team, well-drilled team, they run good sets, and um, I, I, I know exactly now um, what I felt that we needed to work on, and it solidified everything in my mind. You've seen it in practice, I'm sure, so much with Trez with, with the dunks. Does he ever see some of that, the lob over the head? Like, does that even get a rise out of you, or are you like, no, okay, that's, that's just what he does? Get a rise out of me? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I, that's Montrez. That's what he can do. His timing's excellent. His length is excellent. He's a very good passer. Um, you know, he's a good leader. He, he doesn't surprise me at all. Terry doesn't surprise me. Chris doesn't. Um, we got Wayne play, playing much more aggressively now. You know, I got on him at halftime about rebounding the ball, and he did a good job. So we, there's six players I've got great confidence in right now. I thought Anton was okay on defense. Thought he was okay. That gives us seven. If Q comes around defensively, that gives us eight. We're perfect. We're fine. Just got to get Q playing some defense, and we're fine. Why did Sha uh, Shaquan sit out today? I can't play everybody. I really can't. And, you know, I didn't play honest. I didn't play Mats. I've got to work on getting ready for Minnesota. You know, it's a different schedule this year. So I can't, you know, I know you want him to play, but I can't put him in because you want him to play. <laughs> Why didn't you ask about Dylan Apo too or somebody else? <laughs> well, he's a six, seven, four right. star recruit. What about Honest? He played. How much? Like two minutes. Why would Honest have been in so many? No, I know you, you make it a valid point, but there's more to it than that. Uh, he's, I haven't been happy with him in practice too much, but um, there's more to it than that. Anything else, coach? See you guys.